And we just ask that you bless this and bless everyone here today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Come on, kiddo. This. <laughs> this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Won't let it say.
called No Ordinary Worship. But I love this song, and it's one of my favorites that we've learned. And I love it because I don't want to be the ordinary worship. I want to be the unordinary worship. I want people to feel God hear me when I walk into a room. And I don't want to see me. I want to see God. And I want to know, be known when I leave. You know, when we were here talking last night about Boomer, I want my legacy to be like she was a godly woman and her worship was anointing. Yeah, yeah. So I pray that every time I'm in church, and I just love this song, I hope you all enjoy it. But don't let me stop you. If you need prayer or anything, please come do it. Yeah. This ain't no
Because people might think I'm crazy, but I'm telling you, I serve a God that is alive and it's real and it's faithful. That is there for me when nobody else can be. He sees me at my weakest moments, but he is there. And I want to worship him with all I have, Judy. Every breath in my lung, I want to stay to the very end. I said, I'm going to praise him to my very last breath. And I don't want to be like you, and I don't want you to be like me, but I want you to be the God the way God wants you to be and wants you to worship this morning. Because there is nothing else better in this world than my God and my Savior. Nothing else better.
You know all the things I've done It must be love It must be love
Part of this message I've had for a little while, and I never could figure out why, why God gave me just a little bitty message and where to go with it. Seven point five billion people lives on this earth. Billion. There's only six hundred million that claims Christianity. It's ninety-two percent going to hell. They don't find Jesus. Eight percent going to heaven. Got questions that bother you? Let's try something. Everybody stand up, please. Now everybody sit back down. Y'all see how easy that was? Y'all follow guidance from a man that we do on a daily basis. <coughs> saying disobey, disobey the laws. That's not what I'm going with this. But I have a God of second chances. I've got a God that sent his son to die on Calvary's cross for me and you. I've got a God that allowed us to walk free. There's a man I read about in the Bible, and I've read about, and I've read about, and I've read about. I never understood it until I heard a message preached to me through YouTube and Facebook, and I've heard it a few times. There's a man named Barabbas. That was set free. In Matthew 27, 11 through 14, you have, I call it the march to the cross. During this time, you have the Jews having Passover. And Pilate always allowed one prisoner to be set free. And in this time, just so happened, you had a man named Barabbas, and you had or Jesus, which was Christ. <coughs> Matthew 27, verse 11, Pilate asked, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, Thou sayest. His accusers, in verses 13, 12 and 13, Remark to him without a remark back on Jesus. It goes on in 15 through 31 that Jesus never really spoke another word. And you had his accusers get out in the crowd. You had his accusers go out to this crowd of all these Jews that had the chance to choose Jesus. One. Or Barabbas to be set free. You had had these accusers walking up to people too. Say Barabbas. Say we want Barabbas. And slowly you heard, we want Barabbas. Come on. <coughs> we want Barabbas. Before long you heard, we want Barabbas. Crucify Christ. Who is Barabbas? Barabbas. I've read this message so many different times. This man was a murderer. He was a thief. He was a leader of a riot. He was a bad man. He was a sinner. And the more I read this message, and the more I preached this message to myself, Barabbas was me. Barabbas was you. Yeah. I am a rabbis. I'm that sinner that got set free. That I should be hanging on Calvary's cross. Not Jesus. That's right. Come on, Joey. We should be hanging there. We should be looking at him being persecuted. When we announced, when we said, God, I believe your son was sent to die for me. When you give your heart to God, 
Hope you okay me reading for notes because I am all over. And in Matthew 16, 24, Jesus said, If any man come after me and take up his cross and deny himself, if any man come after me and deny himself and take up his cross and follow me, for whoever... For whoever will save his life will lose it, but whoever will lose his life will gain it. What that means, church, what that means is you will be persecuted falsely. You will be hanging on that cross the same as he did. What that means is it's not an easy road. It's not that easy just to get up here and hit your knees, pray your sinner's prayer, pour your heart out to him, and get up and go do it and walk, walk in the sin that you was of yesterday. What it is, I'm not the person that's going to be able to take that sin away. I'm not that person that's going to be able to say, Christopher, it's okay, buddy, go ahead. It'll come off in due time. Come on. It's okay, Lindsay. You'll come out of it, I promise. But you just work on you, okay? That's not what walking for Christ is. He said, you take up your cross and follow him. Yeah. Come on. You pick this up and you go on. What that means is you hand everything over to him. Here you go, God. Here's my financial trouble. Here you go, God. Here's the sin I'm in. Here you go, God. This is what he wants from you. He don't want you to halfway walk, halfway talk to him. What he wants from you is don't worry about that 92% that's going to hell. Don't be caught up in your own fire that you run past somebody that's burning that you had the bucket of water to put them out. Don't you walk past him and say, I'm going this way, just stay there. No, 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 that's not what he wants from you. What he wants from you is to grab that person. Grab that person and say, come on with me. Follow me to Christ. Let me show you the way. Come on. Let me show you how God works. Let me show you how He works. Like, let me show you how He moves in your life. The way He's moved in mine because that's my God. Amen. That's my God. Hell was never meant for me. It wasn't meant for anybody in here. God gave us a choice of free will. God gave us a chance to spend eternity with Him and live forever. Or go to a place he prepared for the devil and his angels. On this day, who do you choose you will serve? On this day, where will you stand if you're called home tomorrow? Where will you go? Will you go on to be with your family? Or will you go on to burn That's not the message I'm preaching here. The message I'm preaching here, who is ready to get up and move for God? Who is ready to get up and do what Jesus said over here? In... <clears throat> in Mark 16, 15, Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the word. Because if you worry about that 92% that I told you is going to hell, you're going, you want to worry about this word. But preacher, I'm not called. But all is called the fruit you have chosen to be when I'm saying. You're, it is your duty to go out and preach the gospel and tell everybody about God's love. It's your duty to tell people about that hell that's burning eternally. That hell that, that needs your soul to continue to burn. That hell that is so fight, so hot. That is so hot. That you'll beg for a leper to touch his finger in water and cool your tongue. Do you want your friends to go to hell? Do you want your friends to not ever see you again? Do you want, do you want that person that you pass by on the street cussing? Utter madness. 
First Amendment's wife. Her first and her kids the way she does. And living, living a worldly life. When you know what's right, what's wrong, and where you stand. But are you ready to stand for him the way he hung for you? Because if we continue to move on in life and move the way God doesn't intend us to move, are we better than that sinner that you walk past? Are you better than the thief, the murderer, the robber that got set free? Because I don't believe that guy that got set free just moved. And walked away from what was going on. I believe he sat there and he looked. As I looked at that cross and said. That should be me. That was supposed to be me. Why is he there? Why am I not there? I believe somewhere inside he thanked that man. It don't tell us there. But, but who is that man? Like I said that man is me. That man is you. Not everybody has this big, brought out testimony to tell how God moved in their life and took you from drug addiction. Who took you from alcoholism? Who took you from jumping from this person to that person in relationships and living in this world? No, no, no. Some of us lock ourselves up in our own prison. And God unlocks. And God allows you to walk forward. Not everybody has this glory to God testimony that you see. If you're waiting for that, oh, a moment to start moving for God to show everybody what God's done for you, the time's going to pass you to die. Preacher, 
The buildings aren't open all the week. Church ain't a building. That's right. Christ ain't a building. What is a Christian? Christ like. To be a Christian, you've got to be Christ-like. What did Christ do? He went out into all the world and talked about his Father and what his love was. Yeah. What did Christ do? He died for us. What you what do you need to do? You need to die for the old you. But I can't do that, preacher. I can't give up my old things. I tried. I tried doing this. I tried to quit drinking to show people that. I tried to have a steady relationship, preacher. I tried. You know what you've done? The same thing I've done every time I've got up here behind the pulpit. I tried. I tried myself. You know what you need to do? You need to quit trying yourself and try God for a minute. You may be saved. You may have God. But you need to try God. You need to get that dose of God that he wants you to have. Because the one time, the one time you hand him everything right here. Or wherever your offer is. I'm not telling you it's just here. There's offers out there. It may be the edge of your car. It may be the edge of your bed. It may be in the floor of a bathroom. When you pour your heart out. To do everything that you need to do. But the first time. The very first time that you show God. He's in control. And you hand him everything. Guess what? Those shackles come off them arms. Those balls that's wrapped to your legs, slowing you down in your walk. Before long, you're running for God. You're jumping for God. That's what He wants you to do. He don't want you to sit here and sit on your butt on a Sunday and go, Amen, preacher. Amen, preacher. Glory to God. Listen to that, Listen to that angel sing up there. Listen to how people's playing that music. That's not what He wants. <clears throat> Maybe this is a little bit to pour a little gasoline on that fire for you through the week. But my God's the same on Monday that he is on Sunday. He's the same God on Wednesday that he is on Sunday. He's the same God on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Don't forget, forget to leave out Saturday. Because my God, my God wants you to move the same way you move in that pew when you're worshiping on Monday morning. Whenever life hits you head on. Whether it's finances that's got you down. Whether it's your language problem when you get angry that's got you tied down. No matter what it is, give it to God. Let God remove that. Because you, everyone in here does not have, no one in here that has the power to do what God can do. I watched him take a young man That was never in trouble. They never done any wrong in anybody's house. That walked in a dark, shadowy place. Very dark place. That no one saw to him. He was really good at hiding his true identity. He lied to everybody to glorify himself. He's addicted to, there's other addictions, people. Are you addicted to yourself? Because I don't know. This young boy was a mess. I wanted popularity. I wanted fame. I didn't give, give two craps about fortune because I knew if I had fame, I could have anything. I wanted everybody to know me. I wanted everybody to know who Joey Sauce was. I wanted everybody to know me when in the motocross world, when I figured out I couldn't ride. I couldn't win. I want everybody to know me as a freestyle rider. I ended up wrecking a lot. They called me the cardiac kid. No joke. Then I started looking at it. When I got older in life and I started trying to draw, draw closer to God, I didn't have a testimony. So I continued to run. Who in here is running because they don't have a testimony? <coughs> Who in here don't see the deliverance that God's already delivered you from? Somebody here today is struggling with God, what God wants them to do. But they don't want to move. They don't want to go forward because they have no testimony. Because they grew up in church from here to now. So did I. 
But I enjoy the word of the thing. I enjoy the popular. I enjoy the thing. I enjoyed being to know I didn't care if it was bad or good. When I walked into the room, huh, there you go. When I walked into a room, I wanted to be known like Christ was. And then before long, I lost sight of who that man was. I said I do. I said I lost him. But when every other word out of your mouth is language that makes sailor blush? Are you really living for Christ? If you don't say it in here on Sunday, don't say it out there on Monday in anger. Because Jesus says, be angry and sin not. But preacher, man made those words bad. Set yourself different, apart from the world. Mark 15, verse 7, Barabbas was told he was, he was introduced as a murderer. John 18, 40, a robber. Luke 23, 25, and Mark 15, 7, they, he was a leader of the insurrection, which is a riot. He was a leader of a big riot. This man is us. We on that cross. We before we were even born, we hung. We had the chance to hang there, but no, 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 he didn't speak up. He never said a word. But if you say so, if you say that's what I am, that's me. He speak words of bone. Let me speak pain to you all. That man. He said, you call yourself, you call yourself a king? Well, if you say so. They started accusing him of other things. He sat there and I guarantee he had this grin on his face. That'd be the way I would be if that, that's how I see Christ. Just giving that nod and just grin. Knowing what is to come. You got this man in another room. Shaking. Trembling because he knows he's getting ready to be hung on that cross. Knows he's getting ready to die. Because this man, this man doesn't know one. He has no reason to hang up there. In Roman times, to be a Roman that Barabbas was, you had to do some pretty nasty things to hang on the cross. Jesus was passing through. It's easy for them to hang. It's easy for them to hang someone that's passing through because they wasn't wrong. But Barabbas, Barabbas knew he'd done wrong. Same way I knew I'd done wrong. I deserve for my past the devil's hell. I deserve to be crucified. I deserve whatever else the world wants to do to me. That's what I deserve. But no. Jesus. Jesus comes right there. For me. Let me walk. And let you walk. What have you done to glorify that this morning? Have you stood up and told somebody the gospel? Have you stood up and, and preached in a Walmart parking lot to some friends? <coughs> Have you walked behind closed doors to that work person that you know is not doing right? Why don't you beat them up over what they're doing wrong? But to tell them who Christ is. To tell them about the love that he's done for me or you. How he set you free that Calvary morning. How he just hung there. Are you ready to pick up that cross? Are you ready to carry it? Are you ready to be persecuted by the world? Probably not. Guess what? The pain of the world has nothing compared to the glory of God. 
they got to bring, come to bring a song. Don't you all find search your hearts? Search where you're at. Search what you're supposed to be doing. Are you ready to answer that? God's ready. God's ready to move. You gotta allow Him to move. Don't put up a wall and say, God, don't God only come this far. Because my God, my God can tear that wall down. He can tear those shackles off your feet, those shackles off your hands, and move. Because somewhere, somebody is ready to go. Maybe you're wanting to get a little bit closer.